you are making principal and interest repayments in the wrong way. In this video, we're going to be discussing principal and interest versus interest only. We're going to be discussing redraw accounts versus offset accounts and how you can set up principal and interest repayments on your own home or on an investment property in the right way. My name's Luke. I talk all things real estate, renovating, and financial freedom here on the channel. If you're interested in buying a property here in Southeast Queensland, head over to purposeproperty.com.au and let's start talking about how you can make principal and interest repayments in the right way. So let's just clearly define what a principal and interest repayment is and how these accounts work. So principal is where you pay down the loan balance on your property, whereas the interest amount is the amount you owe back to the bank each repayment. So principal is reducing the loan and interest is expenses owed to the bank for the loan being provided to you over a period of time. Now, how can you set up your principal and interest repayments in a better way? If you've set yourself up where you've just got a standard principal and interest repayment, in my opinion, you're doing it the wrong way. I personally would rather go for an interest only loan with a 100% offset account. And the reason I prefer an offset account over a redraw is liquidity. Now, a 100% offset account is just a normal bank account where you can use that as your own everyday spending and for your own everyday money. Whereas a redraw account is you drawing back on the loan to get access to more cash. So it can be more difficult to access a redraw account if the bank changes their policy on you. So I personally prefer a 100% offset account because it's your money and it's your liquidity. Another important thing to remember when people run their cash flows on buying an investment property is that principal affects your cash flow, but principal payments don't affect your profit and loss. So what do I mean by that? When you're making a principal repayment on your loan, you should consider that as part of your cash flow, but you shouldn't consider that as part of the income and expenses when analyzing that investment property. Now, why is that? Because making those principal repayments each week, each fortnight, or each month is actually just paying down the loan and essentially a way of forced savings. And therefore, principal repayments are an impact on your liquidity, not an impact on your profitability. I probably need to say that again for it to sink in. Principal repayments impact your liquidity and not your profitability. So you do want to make sure you understand your cash flows when assessing an investment property or your own home in making principal and interest repayments. But on the flip side, you also want to understand the profitability of an investment property looking at the income and expenses, excluding that principal repayment because you are reducing your own debt. So how can we structure ourselves in a way that's more effective to build out your asset base, maximize your deductions and maintain liquidity? And the way I like to do that as a chartered accountant and how Emily and I run our own property portfolio is to use the power of those offset accounts and try and use interest only terms on our investment properties while still making a principal and interest repayment on our own home. Let me explain that a little further. The reason we like to do interest only on the investment properties is we like having that liquidity. So we want those 100% offset accounts with those investment properties. Also the debt to attach your investments is tax deductible. So you wanna maximize your tax deductible debt and minimize your owner occupied debt. That's why we would be making principal and interest repayments against our own home. In addition to the principal and interest repayments on your own home, we also like having a 100% offset account also attached to your own home. So every property and every loan we have has a 100% offset account. And what Emily and I like to do is park all of our excess cash in the offset account tied to our own home because that is non-deductible debt for tax purposes. Now, in some cases, it can actually be the right decision for some people to do interest only on every single one of their loans, whether it's an owner-occupied residence or it's an investment property. This does potentially reduce your serviceability with the banks because you're not paying down your debt over time and you're shortening the term of the loan from 30 years to 25 years if you have a five year interest only period. So you need to take into account the impact on your serviceability if you do take out interest only loans. But one of the reasons this can be a good decision for some people is it maximizes their liquidity and means they're using the minimum amount of cash to actually make the repayments to the bank. And that means they can also save up as much money as possible in their 100% offset accounts to then build up deposits for future property purchases. 
I think some people are getting lazy with their principal and interest repayments. They might be using redraw accounts, which can have adverse effects on your tax if you're drawing money out for investment purposes and then redrawing money out for your own to go buy a boat or to go buy a car or your own personal use. So in my opinion, it's much cleaner to have a loan and an offset account for each of your properties. You can't do this in all circumstances and you can't also do interest only in all circumstances. So you need to find the right balance for you. For Emily and I, it's been having principal and interest repayments on our own home because that means we maximize the interest rate deduction that we can get. You get a much lower interest rate in some circumstances, especially with owner-occupied property, if you're going to make a principal and interest repayment. We still make sure we have a 100% offset account. And then for all of our other investment properties, we've got 100% offset accounts and most of them are essentially on interest only. In my opinion, using interest only can be a good long-term strategy because you can roll over a five-year interest only period into a 10-year period if you have the serviceability. And that's also a very critical factor here is you need to have the day job incomes or the business income to support your property portfolio. So what I think is happening is people are getting lazy, they're making principal and interest repayments when it might not make sense, and it's important to protect your liquidity, maximize your tax deductions, and make sure you're being able to build that bigger asset base. It's also great to look at the benefits of holding a larger portfolio and how inflation can actually impact your debt. The more inflation that we have in Australia's economy, the more your debt will be inflated away because as your asset base grows, the inflation becomes less and less relative to the total value of your property portfolio. And that's why a lot of investors like to use this interest only structuring to see their asset values grow as the debt is being held at the same level and being inflated away. So make sure you're not making principal and interest repayments in the wrong way. And if you want to sit down and have a chat with myself and run through your numbers, run through your property portfolio strategy and how we can help secure a property for you here in the Southeast Queensland market in the next three to six months, head over to purposeproperty.com.au to book in a free chat with myself. We'll sit down, chat about your situation, talk you through our process as buyers agents and leave some time for some questions at the end. So drop a like on this video, subscribe to the channel down below. And if you wanna see some recent client purchases here in the Brisbane market, click this playlist over here. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.